All right, here we are at chapter 20, Conventional Energy Alternatives. We are going to be starting with section one, which is all about nuclear power. All right, so a um, few definitions for you before we move on. Nuclear, uh, conventional means already in use. And basically, it's referring to stuff that's already in use that is not fossil fuels. Uh, nuclear power is a conventional source of power, but it's not considered renewable. Biomass, hydropower, and wind are both conventional sources of power that are renewable. Uh, note that although uh, they are called conventional, they're not nearly as pop popular as the three fossil fuels are as an energy source. All right, so uh, what energy source provides the globe with most of its electricity? Again, fossil fuels, and it's largely coal. How are conventional energy alternatives uh, largely different from fossil fuels? They're largely renewable and have less impact on the environment than fossil fuel use. Remember that nuclear power is a non-renewable source, but it still has less of an impact in some ways than fossil fuels do. However, they're also more expensive in the short term simply because we don't use them as often, and external costs are not included in the market price. Um, what that means is uh, the cost of things like harvesting and, the, and, and putting the environment back to the way that it was, and perhaps uh, damage that's done to the environment and human health are not factored into the, um, the cost of the, the fuel source. Name one country that is significantly less in its fossil fuel use. It's right here, Sweden. Um, it's the central case that's there in, in chapter 20. Um, and they use biomass, they use nuclear, they use fossil fuel, uh, hydroelectric, excuse me, and they use wind power. So you can see all of that there in use. And um, for those of you who don't know where Sweden is, it's this guy right here. Um, what type of pollution is not produced by nuclear power plants? Air pollution. And that's a really big deal um, because there's no combustion component to the generation of electricity. So I'm going to have you guys do the energy dance in class, but you need to embed this in your head. The way that we have gotten electricity has been the same since the Industrial Revolution. You take, uh, if you're burning something, you take whatever it is that you're burning and you boil water and that creates steam. And uh, steam is a gas that expands very quickly, so if you put it into a uh, gradually smaller tube, it makes it go faster. And you make it go fast enough that it goes by a turbine. Um, the little pinwheels that you blow on and they spin around, that's a turbine. Um, a water wheel is also a turbine. It's anything that you basically convert that uh, a movement into mechanical energy. So you uh, you burn the stuff, which is usually coal, to boil the water to create the steam that turns the turbine, uh, which is just a wheel that goes really fast, that turns the generator, as uh, I believe in the earlier video we talked about before, is uh, nothing more than a machine that has magnets and copper wires in it. That's really all you need to understand, and it turns around and it creates electricity. Same every time. Even nuclear power, we have harnessed the the energy within the building blocks of life itself to boil water. That's basically what a nuclear power plant is. All right, but nuclear power does not produce air pollution because there's no combustion component. So that is something that is good. Um, what country is the top producer of nuclear power? United States, as you can see right there, we are by far and away the greatest producer of nuclear power. That's probably a nugget you want to tuck away in your head for the national exam. Uh, how does nuclear fission create energy? And listen to what I'm saying. Fission, F-I-S-S-I-O-N. It is the splitting of nuclei. Um, you send a nucleus in like a bullet, hits an atom, which splits it apart. And remember, energy is what's keeping it together, so it releases energy and more neutrons. And those go out like a bullet, yada, yada, yada. Um, so releases energy, which is heat and radiation and more neutrons, setting off a chain reaction. An atomic bomb is nothing more, well, a nuclear power plant is nothing more than an atomic bomb that has been controlled. Um, let's see, How? let me just go back to this question. Sorry, I got a little carried away. How does nuclear fission create energy? If you look in your textbook for this particular chapter, there are some decent um, figures. And so I'm going to refer to figure 20.3. So you may want to stop this video and go grab your book real quick. All right. 
neutron hits an atom of uranium-235. Uranium atom splits into smaller atoms and some neutrons, also releasing energy or radiation. Um, without control devices, it's a runaway chain reaction. What are the two major elements used in nuclear fission? It's uranium and pl plutonium. Um, it is specifically the isotopes uranium-235 and plutonium-239. And here again is a picture for you. You're welcome to go take a look at this uh, animation of fission occurring. And here it is again. All right. What is an isotope's half-life? It's the time it takes for half the radioactive uh, atoms present to give off radiation and decay. The time varies from element to element. Uranium's half-life is about 700 million years, which basically means that it stays radioactive forever. And radiation does things like kill you. It doesn't give you superpowers, unless you consider dying early a superpower. All right, what's, what must be, okay, and here are all half-lives. You can see things like potassium and iodine, not so much. Now, you are made of carbon. Carbon-14 is radioactive, and it's radioactive for a long time. But remember, it's not only the length, it's also the strength of the radiation. And, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uranium puts out a lot more energy and uh, neutrons. It causes problems. All right. You need to understand how a nuclear power plant works from beginning to end. What must be done to make mined uranium ore useful in a nuclear power plant? The uranium-235 component must be concentrated to at least 3%. Remember, this stuff occurs naturally. If you remember, we talked about radon gas. It comes from decaying uranium-235 when it's low level. But you got to harvest that stuff and concentrate it to an ore that is about 3% um, U-235. And uh, what is the, uh, it usually occurs in concentrations of less than 1%. So what is the minimum concentration of uranium necessary to be useful on the power plant? Again, 3% and it's stored in fuel rods. Um, what, hmm, let me see if I went too far, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Uh, what substance in a nuclear reactor slows down bombarding neutrons? That's the moderator like water or graphite. Which device removes neutrons entirely from the process, converting fission from an exponential reaction to a linear one, which means it's not a bomb anymore? Those would be control rods made of a metallic alloy. So basically, if something goes wrong with the moderator and the control rods, if this water, let's say, gets too hot and boils away, you have a reaction that slowly becomes a, nu a uh, nuclear bomb again, an atomic bomb. All right, contrast breeder and burner or conventional reactors. A breeder reactor uses uranium-238, which is usually waste from conventional fission, by adding a neutron to it and taking an electron from it to create plutonium-239, which then goes through traditional nuclear fission processes. Um, it makes better use of the fuel, it generates uh, more power, and produces less waste. However, the drawback is that it's way more dangerous because liquid sodium is used as a coolant, so the facilities are way more expensive um, and it could act as a source of plutonium for nuclear weapons if somebody were able to get in there and steal some. Burner reactors are traditional. Those are the ones that we see um, uh, used most often. Um, it uses uranium-235 as an energy source. Go ahead and take a look at figure 20.5 uh, in your textbook. All right. Um, now, let's talk about the word fusion. Fusion means to join nuclei together, and that is where you take hydrogen atom atoms and you smush them together under high heat and temperature to create helium. Idea naturally occurring perpetual fusion reactor you're exposed to every day, that would be the sun. That's why you can get skin cancer, because you have, that's where the radiation comes from. When you're, when you're doing these nuclear reactions, it produces radiation, and that energy mutates your DNA, and in most cases, well, actually all cases, uh, your superpower is getting cancer. All right, so um, ID two major chemical reasons why it's difficult to create a fusion reaction on Earth. Uh, you cannot overcome a mu mutually uh, repulsive forces of protons in a controlled manner, and uh, you cannot create temperatures of many millions of degrees Celsius here on Earth. So basically, we don't have the juice that it takes to make this happen. We can't press hydrogen hard enough together to overcome the repulsive forces, and we also can't put it under a high enough temperature here on Earth. Um, all right, so, and here is what fusion looks like. So please know the difference between fission and fusion. 
All right. Um, this is again figure 20.5. This is another version of it. Be able to describe the components of a nuclear power plant, especially the moderator, control rods, primary, secondary, and cooling loops of water, and containment building. Notice where electricity generation takes place and what the cooling towers put out into the atmosphere. So, um, right here, this white stuff that's coming out is not smoke, that's water vapor, because look at what's going on here. You have the nuclear reactors creating incredible heat. Water is circulated through that, and it is ridiculously hot. Now you're like, well, why don't they put the turbine in there? Um, because this water is also ridiculously radioactive. So you pass it through a second loop of water. That boils that. Okay, so you're boiling one loop of water, and then the heat is being transferred to a second loop of water where that boils, where it turns the turbine to turn the generator to create the electricity. Now, in order for this loop to work, the steam is going to have to be condensed and reused and reused. So you have this third loop of water. You've got to pump in water from an outside source, river, lake, or the ocean, to cool down this loop. The water that is discharged back into the water source is going to be really warm no matter how long the second pipe is. So this is a source of thermal pollution. Despite the fact that no air pollution is being produced here, it's thermal pollution is a big problem with this stuff. And again, if you look at this, if any one of these pumps shuts down, this becomes ridiculously hot. These moderator rods can no longer control what's going on here and the steam will build up and this thing will blow like a top. Um, meaning that you're releasing radioactive steam that goes everywhere, and then you have this uncontrolled uh, reaction that's going on. So this cooling system is very, very, very important. And if this does explode, you then have radioactive um, pollution, and um, when these rods are done being useful, they're still radioactive, and so that is another source of pollution. Whenever you're looking at systems like this, think about the good stuff, then think about the bad stuff, which is usually pollution. Um, other bad things about this is, again, habitat destruction to build it. You had to use fossil fuels to go ahead and build this as well. The, the usual things. All right. Um, let's see if I covered all of the points here. All right. And again, you ha not again, but you have to be near a body of water to make this happen. Um, if you're not, you, you can't do this. All right. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and stop this and read it, and it's got the whole series of steps for you. All right, what are the pros and cons? Um, let's see, contrast environmental impacts of nuclear and coal-fired power plants. All right, there's no primary or secondary air pollution from nuclear power. Nuclear power uses far less fossil fuels than coal-fired power plants because coal-fired coal power plants use fossil fuels primarily. Um, there's more power per mass um, in uranium, so you have less impact from mining it. Um, normal operation of nuclear power plants makes them safer than coal-fired power plants. You also don't have emissions of things like, like mercury. Um, now the drawbacks of nuclear, uh, the radioactive waste, that's huge, and we have never come up with a good place to put it. Um, uh, massive and long-term disaster when things go wrong, and again, the thermal pollution. All right, you need to know three nuclear disasters that have happened in recent memory. Two of them are in your book. The third one we'll talk about with our supplemental material. Uh, what is the largest nuclear power plant disaster of the U.S.? It's Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania. In the world, it's Chernobyl, Ukraine. How are the disasters different? The Three Mile Island disaster was a partial meltdown, but the radiation was contained within the building. Um, the other issue is people were notified of it almost immediately. Um, you can see that evacuations took place. Um, with Chernobyl, it resulted in a nuclear explosion that vented radioactive debris for 10 days. No one was evacuated until after this time passed, and then fallout was, was present around the world. There were um, rings of less and less um, deadly cancers that spread from Chernobyl for years after the accident. Um, and the evacuation was uh, uh, represented to the citizens as being temporary, which is why the residents left all of their belongings behind. All right, and here's Chernobyl after the blast. You can see it literally blew the building up and people left everything behind. There is a third, again, a thir third nuclear disaster that will be in the supplemental material. All right, um, 
How is nuclear waste currently disposed of? Uh, temporary storage at plants that generated it. It's held in pools of cooling water or casks of steel, lead, and concrete. So, um, just you can see also um, at some point the entire reactor becomes uh, radioactive too, and so you've got to shut it down. Then you have to guard it because you can take the spent um, fuel. It's although it's not efficient enough to go ahead and do what you want to do with it, which is create electricity. It's still pretty radioactive. And what a dirty bomb is is a conventional bomb like Boom TNT, where you've taken these spent fuel rods and put them into the mix. So you're basically firing radioactive shrapnel everywhere. So this stuff has got to be guarded. All right, here's a picture of the entire process, and um, here is uh, spent rods being kept within the plant or in casks outside, and here is a dude standing in the snow for re size reference. All right, um, describe why Yucca Mountain is a good place to build a nuclear, a national nuclear waste storage facility. It is unpopulated, it has relatively stable geology, it has a dry climate and a deep water table. Um, take a look at page 587, you also need to know the because pieces. A uh, major concern is a possibility of hijacking. If that's the only place we're gonna be putting um, spent fuel rods, uh, you're going to do that uh, travel, uh, get them there by train, and everybody's going to know that they're traveling that way and they could be hijacked on the way and again turn to dirty bombs. Um, these are some other uh, currently not used um, ways of getting rid of nuclear waste. I'm sure you can guess the pros and cons of all of them. All right, um, again, how do we store it? Uh, the, this uh, place in Yucca Mountain is, it hasn't happened. I don't know that it's going to happen because look at how much it's going to cost for us to do this. All right, so uh, ID one economic reason why nuclear power plants are not often built currently in the U.S. Uh, public anxiety. That's not economic, but that's a, a reason. The cost of construction. These things, like I said, are ridiculously expensive to build. Uh, they don't make a profit. They have to be sponsored by the government. Um, they have a very short lifespan. You're talking 60 years, maybe. And then the expense of decommission, decommissioning the plant, you've basically got to entomb it in concrete and then put a 24-7 guard on it. And then the overall high cost of electricity production. Uh, there's no, again, there's no way those things can make a profit. So here's all of this stuff here. And uh, that is the end of your first video.